Hey y'all, what's good, what's poppin'? So for today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and do a get ready with me, but this one's gonna be a little special because I'm gonna be doing this using pretty much exclusively Fenty Beauty products. I know I've done a bunch of different versions of like my everyday get ready with me look, and that's basically what I'm gonna be doing for this video. But like I said, I'm gonna be using pretty much exclusively Fenty Beauty products. Everything except for one product in here is Fenty Beauty. You may or may not be aware recently, Sephora did have their spring savings event. So I did go ahead and stock up on and some of my favorite Fenty Beauty products while they were on sale. And I also picked up a few new ones that I've never tried before, but I've always been interested to try. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a nice quick little get ready with me and show y'all how I got this natural everyday makeup look using pretty much exclusively Fenty Beauty products, some that I've been using for a while that I featured here on the channel multiple times and that I really love, and a couple new purchases that I've been trying out that I've also been loving that I wanna share with y'all. So if you're interested to see that, to see how I threw together this look and hear me talk about some of these products, that's where we're gonna be doing today but before I get into the video I do just want to say thank you to all my new and returning subscribers out there thank y'all so much for sticking around supporting my content and helping me to grow my channel if you are new here and you haven't already just be sure to go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell button as well so that you get a notification every time I upload a new video and with that being said let's go ahead and get into it so first things first I'm gonna go ahead and touch up my complexion a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and go on with this pro filter instant retouch concealer and I'm using mine in the shade 290 and basically what I'm gonna do is any area Areas where I might have some hyperpigmentation, redness, inflammation, anything that I'm just trying to cover up, I'm gonna go ahead and just dot a little bit of this on those spots. And I'm gonna let it sit for a second just so that it has a little bit of time to set before I go ahead and blend it out. I just find that using this method allows my concealer to give me even fuller coverage, which is what I really need for these problematic areas that I'm trying to cover up. I know usually people will apply their concealer as their second step. They'll apply like a foundation, a skin tint or something like that as their base and then apply concealer on top. I just find that applying concealer underneath a base product really allows me to get away with using a lot less of the base product itself which really helps my skin underneath to shine so recently I've been loving just using a concealer underneath whatever my foundation of choice is to help you know do all the heavy lifting and correct any dark spots or inflammation I have going on that I'm gonna want to cover up so I've gone ahead and applied the concealer to all the spots on my face where I have some hyperpigmentation or some redness going on and like I said I really want this concealer Concealer to do the heavy lifting. I'm gonna go in with a light layer of the Fenty Skin Tint after I go ahead and blend this out. But I do want the concealer to give me as much coverage as possible just because, like I said, when I go in later with the skin tint, I don't really wanna have to use a lot of product. I don't wanna have to layer it on top to get that coverage that I'm looking for. So I do wanna give it a second to set just so that, like I said, but I do go ahead and blend it out. It doesn't just buff away. I do get a little bit of coverage from it. So I'm gonna let it sit for about five minutes or so and let everything set. And then I'll come in and buff everything away. And hopefully that should pretty much even out my complexion so that I don't really have to use too much of the skin tint. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that set for a minute and then I'll be back to finish the rest of this look. All right, y'all, so I'm back now. I went ahead and let the concealer set for about five minutes and now I'm ready to buff it in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this Real Techniques Expert Face Brush and I'm just gonna go ahead and buff in all the areas where I have unblended concealer and just work that into my complexion. All right, so here's my skin with the concealer all buffed in. Honestly, just the concealer by itself already gives me really good coverage. This is a medium to full coverage concealer. And especially, like I said, because I let it set for a second, it is a little bit more full coverage right now. It's done a good job of covering up a lot of this discoloration I have going on and really evening out my skin tone. And honestly, for a no makeup makeup look, I would be pretty satisfied with this. Like this really just looks like my skin minus the redness and the inflammation, but it could be a little bit more evened out. And even though I've covered up some of the inflammation and the redness, I do still see a little bit of my skin's natural texture. Now, obviously texture is natural. No matter how much makeup you wear, you are going to have some texture and you can't cover everything up. That being said though, there are products that you can use that do help improve the appearance of that. And Fenty specifically has released a bunch of products that are really good at giving you that nice soft blurred skin look. So with that being said, I am going to go ahead and go over my entire complexion with this Ease Drop Blurring Skin Tint. I have mine here in the shade 10. So this is the newest complexion release from from Fenty Beauty and it's a lot different compared to the other foundation products she's released in the past. She came out with her original matte foundation then there was a hydrating foundation and then her powder foundation and all those are supposed to give a medium to full coverage buildable finish. This on the other hand is a light to medium buildable finish. This has been my go-to recently. This is what I reach for and I just want to go ahead and even out my skin tone a little bit and I'm not necessarily looking for perfection as far as the amount of coverage it gives me and I really love too the way that this sits on the skin. It really helps to smooth over the appearance of 
any pores, fine lines, or texture I have going on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply some of that all over my face. Not too much, like I said, I'm really just trying to even everything out. I was mainly using the concealer to go ahead and neutralize the redness and cover up my hyperpigmentation, so I'm not really expecting this product to do all that. But what I am hoping to achieve by just applying a thin layer of this all over is hoping to further even everything out and also to give me that nice blurred skin effects. But let me quit rambling. I'm gonna go ahead and blend it out now. So I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. I'm gonna take a beauty sponge to blend everything out. I know normally with foundation products that I usually use a brush, but actually I've been experimenting with this a little bit, trying different ways of applying it, seeing how it wears best. I do think that there is a little bit of a learning curve to this. And I found that while I do like how this looks with a brush, it does apply seamlessly that way. First of all, it is a lot less effort to blend it in with a beauty sponge compared to a brush. And also, I don't know what it is about the sponge, but I just find that it really does give me that nice natural skin-like finish and it helps to give me the perfect amount of coverage. This is a Juno & Co sponge. I know that these are supposed to be like really good for applying foundation. They're supposed to really blend everything in seamlessly and give you a nice full coverage look. I did try applying this before also with a Real Technique sponge and it looks really good with that as well. The only reason why I'm not even using that sponge right now instead of this one is because one time when I was going to clean it, it actually exploded on me. So I needed a new beauty sponge and I really just love how this looks blended in with a sponge. Let me go ahead and come a little bit closer to the camera so y'all can see. But this is what the complexion looks like with everything blended in with the sponge. Look at that. Everything is all covered up and blurred out. I don't have any obvious skin texture or anything like that. If I was honestly feeling low effort and I wasn't doing a whole look, I would probably stop here on a natural makeup day. But I do have a couple more products here that I want to go ahead and apply to really complete the look. The foundation has had a decent amount of time to set. I just want to set it a little bit further with some powder. So I'm going to take this Fenty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation and use this as my setting powder. I know that this is a powder foundation and this is actually a more recent purchase of mine from Fenty and I really love it. I love it a lot as a foundation, but I also find that it works really well as a setting powder too. So what I like to do when I use this as a setting powder, I take a nice big fluffy brush like this. This is a Real Techniques powder brush. It's really important that you get one that's nice and fluffy like this and not one that's really thick and dense like the Expert Face Brush because with this, the thickness and the denseness of the bristles are gonna pick up a lot of product. So I take something nice and fluffy like this that's able to get enough powder to set the face without grabbing too much to actually give you coverage as you buff it in. So I just take a decent amount on the brush head and I just gently tap it in all over my complexion to just help tone down the shine, set the skin tint and the concealer underneath. In addition, this also helps to amplify that skin blurring and skin smoothing effect that the skin tint's giving me. So now I've got my base complete. We went ahead and went in with the concealer, the skin tint, and then went ahead and set everything with a powder. I do want to go ahead and bronze up my skin a little bit, but before I do that, I do want to go ahead and set my brows real quick. This is the only non-Fenty product I'm using for this look. It's this NYX Bear With Me Brow Setter. I've been really loving this as my clear brow gel recently. It has a pretty good, but still very flexible hold. Personally, my brows, once I brush them into place, are pretty cooperative. I don't really need a super strong hold brow setter. It's not drying or flaky like some other clear brow gels I've tried in the past that contains hemp seed oil which is really rich in essential fatty acids to help nourish and condition the brows. I just start in the middle and work it to the back because that's the area of my brows that needs the most hold and by doing that that's where I'm applying the most product and then with whatever's left over I just go ahead and hit the front and this is the final result. All right now for the creme de la creme we're gonna go ahead and go in with some bronzer. I'm using this Fenty Beauty Sun Stalker Powder Bronzer and this is in the shade Island Ting. This is my consistent go-to powder bronzer. I really love how blendable it is. I really love the depth and the undertone of this one. This shade in particular is a neutral undertone, so it has a mix of both warm and cool going on in here. So it really helps to both bronze the skin and help to sculpt out your features. And it's a really nice depth and color too. I do have the option to build it up if I'm going for a deep bronze, but it also looks really nice and natural if I use a very light hand. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply that with this Fenty Beauty. I believe this is the cheek hugging bronzer brush. I actually picked this up during the Sephora spring savings event because I've always kind of been interested in Fenty's brushes but I just could never justify paying those prices but obviously with the spring savings event I did get a pretty decent discount so I was interested to try it out and I want to go ahead and just show y'all this brush the shape of it in particular look at the bristles there it has this really nice edge here that really allows you to like hug the cheekbone as you apply the bronzer I was thinking you know there's really no way that the shape of the brush has that big of an impact on your bronzer application but actually this makes it really foolproof and easy to do and I really love 
the bronzing effect that it gives. Like I said, really hugs the cheekbone in a nice way. And I was definitely skeptical at first, but I do think that this brush honestly is worth the money because it makes applying the bronzer so easy and foolproof. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this like I would any other bronzer. I'm not necessarily looking to sculpt out my features. I'm looking for more of like a true bronze look. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of hit the perimeter of my face and bronze up anywhere where the sun would naturally hit. So here my forehead, the tops of the cheekbones, the temples, I'll do some down the nose, on the chin. And of course I'll throw some on the neck and ears as well just to blend everything together. So here's my skin all bronzed up and everything. I use a little bit of a lighter hand than I normally would just because like I said, I'm going for more of like a natural kind of no makeup look today. So I really wanted to just use a light hand and bronze everything up to give me a nice natural sun-kissed look, but I didn't want to overdo it. And like I said, the Fenty Bronzer Brush really has a good shape to just kind of hug your skin and give you a nice seamless, perfect bronzer application. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and finish everything off with a little quick lip. So I'm just gonna go ahead and top that off with this Pro Kisser Luscious Lip Balm. And this is in the shade latte lips so this is the medium shade i believe of their tinted lip balms this has a really nice color it's like a pinky brown nude it's really nice natural my lip but better color on me and it's also really comfortable and actually hydrating on the lips a lot of tinted lip balms i've tried you know they're not necessarily the most hydrating some of them can actually dry my lips out but this is really comfortable and actually does hydrate there's shea butter in here i believe which is a really good skin nourishing and conditioning ingredient went ahead and just applied a little light layer of that and that's what we're looking like and that's honestly it for my completed makeup look and that's where I'm gonna end off the video so I hope you all enjoyed this video if you did be sure to go ahead and give it a thumbs up let me know if you've tried any of the products I featured in this video let me know down in the comments as well what you liked about this video what you disliked and let me know if you have any video requests for any specific video topics in the future so I can be sure to keep those in mind when I'm sitting down and thinking of things to film like I said if you haven't already please be sure to go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell button as well so you can get a notification every time I upload a new video video. And with that being said, I should be back shortly with new content. Bye.